really as a part of opposition. You don't want to be celebrating everything the government's doing. Is that more about how you express your discontent? I would suggest, for example, if we're going to, just on a normal press release, if it says, uh, you know, the, the problem is higher mass and it's all the S&P's fault. Just, just take the word S&P out of it, or if it's about the Tories, just take the Tories out of it. Because the problem is the higher mass exam, the problem is Q's at A&E, the problem is student support, the problem is new housing. So who cares whether it's the S&P or not? People will make up their own minds. People can join the dots themselves. They don't need a politician to tell them whose fault it is. They know who's running the country. In fact, you know, the S&P have been running the country for eight years and we haven't laid a glove on them in eight years. Despite we're up there angry, shouting, whatever else we're doing, it's not working. Yeah. So can I suggest that we, let's not be so angry. And can I also suggest that I am not going to be celebrating the SNP. I am going to be critical. This idea that, you know, because I'm not going to be oppositional, I, won't be criti I will be very critical. Because I think that they often, they've adopted many Labour policies in our language, but I don't think they deliver. Um, but I don't think it matters, you know, whether I think they deliver. What really matters is whether the voters think. It's about success as much as anything else. This is why um, I think that uh, sometimes people think we've lost our way. Uh, my colleague Alec Rowley actually had a really good line in his leadership, deputy leadership. He said, he reminded us that the Jarrow marchers didn't march for benefits, they marched for jobs. And I thought it was, it was a really good thing because I think the Labour Party... Um, because we will always fight for people who are um, uh, underprivileged or vulnerable or poor, sometimes we get defined by we, we just become the party of welfare and benefits. That's absolutely not the case at all. You know, and even at the last election, we, we spent so much time talking about zero hours contracts and the living wage. Well, these are really important things, but that's not everybody's life. I mean, I want to talk about success. I want to talk about ambition, getting on. I want you to buy a house, have a nice life, to be prosperous, but, and, and to be able to sort of look after those around you. But to do so in a society where we all care for each other, where we actually look after each other in old age, where you can't be, you know, where, where we shouldn't have food banks. You know, I'm not against food banks. I'm not at all, because they're, they're a sign of charity, of, 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 of uh, compassion. But it is shameful that we have food poverty. So a, a society where we care for each other so much and support each other, that doesn't need to exist. I've made a, a series of policy announcements um, to try and um, frame what I'm offering. And, and I do think it is different. It's not because kids are standing, but it is different from the current direction we've been in and have been travelling in. So it's going back to, for example, what, the reason I stood for Parliament, about devolution. It's about sharing power with the people of Scotland. It's about being less partisan, more open, more optimistic, more forward-looking, less tribal, uh, less aggressive in our politics. So I, one of the things that really depressed me in recent weeks and uh, years is... The, the language of politics in Scotland is so aggressive and so antagonistic, driven by social media, but actually there's an awful lot of personal politics too. I am never, I, I am not going to attack other politicians. You know, I want other politicians in other parties to be the best they can be. I want them all to be good politicians because it brings out the best in everybody. And so I don't want to be personal about it. Uh, and I certainly won't be attacking other politicians in my own party, which has happened in this leadership contest. I just... And yes, yeah, so, uh, so I'm not going to, it's, so it's, not a, it's generally not about you know, my opponent, it's about the offer. But, but I also recognise, you know, Kezia has been the deputy leader, has been leading us in the parliament for the last six months. People can work out the kind of leader she's going to be and what, how her approach is going to uh, take us forward. I am definitely offering something different. I am offering a, a different style and a different strategy and different policies. One of the words that I would use about my own politics is uh, integrity. Um, one of the things, for example, that I think that people are finding so attractive about Jeremy Corbyn's campaign is it's, he's clearly got integrity. He tells you what he stands for. He's not compromised. He doesn't take a position. There's too much in politics, and certainly in our, my own party, but I think in all politics, where you don't tell people what you stand for. What you do is you work out where somebody else is, and then you take a position to the left or right of them. Because if they're out there, then you can win all the votes to the left of them. I, I, and I think that's, that's the Labour Party problem. You know, we're... we're, we're too positional, you know, and I'm not like that. I've got a very clear idea of what the kind of society, the kind of country, the kind of politics, the kind of policies that I want to see.